Getting started with programming is a big decision, but it's not as daunting as people might think. So what I'm going to do in this video is assume that you know nothing, but that you wanna start learning with C-sharp. So we're going to install Visual Studio, we're going to create our first project, and we're going to run a Hello World application. I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry, where we teach people how to code the right way. Now, the first step to get started is to choose what integrated developer environment or IDE you want to use. An IDE is not anything super fancy or scary. All it is is a piece of software that you use to write applications in. So think of it like Microsoft Word or Google Docs, except it has a lot more features and it's related to code and building applications. Now in C-sharp, you have a lot of choices. There is Visual Studio for Windows, which is what I recommend. If you're just getting started, Visual Studio has a nice clean interface, a lot of powerful tools built in, and things just kind of work in a wizard-like way. And that's going to let you spend more time worrying about writing code than trying to figure out what plugins and extensions and things that you have to configure. Now, if you're on a Mac or a Linux machine, you can't use Visual Studio because it's Windows only. In that case, you have a couple choices. You can head on over to JetBrains and you can use the Rider IDE, which is very nice and very well done. Or you can use Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is exceedingly popular with developers who want to work on a lot of different types of applications. It has a very rich community. It has a lot of plugins that you can use to configure the environment however you want, but it is not as easy to get started with in C Sharp and manage projects and applications the way that Visual Studio is. So if you're on Windows, I highly recommend starting with Visual Studio. If you're not on Windows, then Visual Studio Code is for you. Now, up until recently, if you were on a Mac, I recommended the Visual Studio application for Mac. But with the success of Visual Studio Code, you can see on the website here that they are retiring Visual Studio for Mac. So I don't think that's worth learning anymore. If you are on a Mac, choose Visual Studio Code or Rider. For this tutorial, we are going to download and install Visual Studio for Windows. So you'll click here. There are three different versions. The community version is the free version that every learner should be using. It has everything you need. And when you click that button, the download will start automatically. It downloads a little installer, and then you will launch that installer to begin configuring how you want your IDE to work and what types of applications you intend to build. The next step is to run the Visual Studio installer. And what you're going to be faced with is a list of what they call workloads. And these workloads contain a bunch of application types that have a lot in common with each other. You can install all of them, or you can install only the ones you need. Now, I recommend if you're new to C Sharp that you start with just desktop development because that's where the console application project lives, which allows you to write applications in the terminal which is the easiest and least distracting way to focus on C-sharp code. And that is found right here in .NET Desktop Development. And that will install everything you need to get started with C-sharp. But do notice that Visual Studio is very powerful. You can have cloud applications, Python, Node.js, ASP.NET, which is the web framework. If you're serious about going all the way with C-sharp, you're going to end up installing ASP.NET and you're going to end up installing the desktop and mobile applications, which will allow you to build Android, iOS, and those other things. But we're just getting started. We're keeping it simple. We're only going to install .NET desktop development. You can run the installer again later and add the additional workloads when you're ready for them. So don't worry. If you add too much or too little, you can come back to the installer and you can fix that. Now, for those of you viewers who English might not be your first language, they do have language packs that you can install so that you can see the menu options and everything in your native tongue. And with that, we're going to hit the button. It's going to start installing 
and it's several gigabytes of information. So this is going to take some time. We're going to use the magic of fast forwarding the video. And if you check the box to automatically launch Visual Studio, you're going to be presented with this sign in window. Now you do not need to actually create a Microsoft account if you do not want to. I have, I sign into my accounts because it pulls my settings and features around different machines that I use, which is very convenient. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. For the purposes of this tutorial, I am going to skip this for now. And the next thing it asks you to do is personalize your experience. Some people like dark mode, some people like light mode. I tend to use light mode for demo videos because it's easier to see with the contrast and these are the standard colors that you're going to see when you launch older versions of Visual Studio. But if you want to use a different color scheme, you go right ahead. I'm going to choose light. And then the development settings, it's again asking you what type of developer you want to be and what type of developer you're focused on being. And this doesn't make a big difference. You can build any of these applications, even if you select something different here. What it is going to do is that in certain menus and options in Visual Studio, like when you're creating projects, it's going to move things like C Sharp closer to the top, which is just a convenience thing. If you click the wrong thing, don't panic. It's not a big deal. You can change it in the tool options inside Visual Studio later. But since we're working on C Sharp, I am going to choose Visual C Sharp as my development settings, and then we're going to start Visual Studio. And now forevermore, when you launch Visual Studio, this is the first screen you're going to see. And it very quickly allows you to open recent projects that you've been working on. Or if you want to start a new project, there's a couple ways you can go about it. First, you can get it from GitHub. It does integrate nicely. Microsoft bought GitHub, so it integrates nicely with GitHub source control and it will allow you to clone projects directly from the GitHub repository. You can also open projects from the file system. So this will open a file browser. You can choose a Visual Studio solution or project file. I'll explain the difference between those two things later. You can also just open a folder and view the file contents. This is useful if you're writing code or applications or things that don't have a Visual Studio or .NET solution. Like if you were just working with some HTML files in a folder that represented a website, you would use this option to open it. And then finally, you can create a new project from one of the Visual Studio C Sharp templates. And this is what you're going to do 99% of the time when you're starting a new project. So let's go ahead and click that button. Now, because C Sharp and the .NET framework are so versatile and they can build so many different types of applications, the Create New Project screen has a lot of different options on it. And you can see that Visual Studio supports many languages, many platforms, and many different project types. But again, since we're just getting started, we want to work in the console. And because we chose the C Sharp developer settings, you'll see that C Sharp console app did come up to the top. But if you wanted to, you could actually use these filters and say you wanted C Sharp console, and that would filter this list down to just two. And as I discussed in my other video, the difference between the .NET framework and C Sharp, there are two versions of the .NET framework. There is an older legacy version that only works on Windows. And you'll see that referred to as the .NET framework. And you can see here that it only supports Windows. And then you have a C Sharp console app that runs .NET. And when you see .NET without the word framework, that's usually referring to the modern good version of .NET that you should be learning to build your applications. And you can also see that it supports Linux, Mac, and Windows. So it is cross-platform, which is the big feature that the new modern version of .NET supported. So let's go ahead and choose this and hit next. And now it's gonna ask you what you wanna name your project and where you would like to store it. And you'll notice that it's not only prompting us for a project name, but also a solution name. And this is where people get a little bit confused when they're beginners. They're like, well, what's the difference between a project and a solution? And the answer actually isn't that complicated. 
all projects produce output. So the output of a console project is a console application. The output of a web application project is a web application. The output of a class library is a class library. So whatever the project type is, when your application compiles, there will be output. It'll be an EXE, it'll be a DLL, it will be something that was produced by your code. Now in larger and more complicated applications, you may need to stitch several types of projects together. Like you may have an application that has both a web interface and a mobile interface and a desktop interface. So you might end up with three projects, one for web, one for desktop, and one for mobile. And then you might also have some code libraries that you want to share between all three of those user interfaces. Those would go in class libraries. So all a solution file is, is a way to combine multiple projects together and organize them into a single file that you can double click and open everything at once in Visual Studio. There is no code or logic in a solution file. It is just a grouping for multiple projects. And that's what this checkbox is for right here. When you're just getting started or you're just building a very simple single project application, you do not need the whole solution structure because you're not managing multiple projects. So if you check this box, it's still gonna create a solution file. It's just going to dump it into the same folder as whatever project you are creating. If you do it the other way and you uncheck the box, there will be a top level folder with your solution and then all of the projects that need to work together will be put into subfolders under that solution. Now, again, we're just getting started. We're just beginners. We are not going to be managing multiple projects right now. We're going to have one console application. We're going to write our code there and we're going to run it. So we're gonna check this box. And as is traditional for developers, we're going to name this project Hello World. And I recommend that you save your project somewhere on your hard drive. I recommend you create a folder. Uh, I like C colon backslash code or something of the like. Do not put your code files in a cloud drive, like OneDrive or Google Drive. If you do that, and then later on you put your code into GitHub or something like that, things are going to get weird and you're going to regret making that decision. So I usually have a folder on my hard drive, you know, just called C colon backslash code or C colon backslash demos. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that folder. I'm gonna call it demos. I'm gonna select that folder. And then you'll see here project will be created in C colon backslash demos slash the project name, hello world. And that's what we want. We can go ahead and hit next. And it's going to now ask us what version of .NET do we want to use? Now this doesn't matter as much as you think it does. As a beginner, all of the stuff that we're going to write in code is going to be backwards compatible. C Sharp is a very stable language and because it's used so heavily by businesses and in the enterprise, new versions of C Sharp are very hesitant to break anything that used to work. They're very backwards compatible. So this decision doesn't mean as much as you might think it does as a beginner. But they basically divide their versions of the framework into long-term support and standard support. Now I recommend you just pick long-term support because that's good for three years. They promise they're gonna maintain it and not gonna break it. Standard support is a shorter term support and they typically do on and off. So version six is long-term, version seven is standard, version eight will be long-term, version nine will be standard. And that's kind of the cadence that Microsoft does with the .NET framework. And they release these versions approximately every year. So I'm just gonna leave this on six because that's the current long-term support. If you're watching this video later in 2023, version eight is coming out, go ahead and click that. The code isn't gonna be any different. It'll be fine. So let's go ahead and hit create. So now here we are in Visual Studio and there's a lot of buttons, a lot of tabs. There's a lot going on in this interface. We're gonna break all this down. But first, wow, this font is really small. 
Now in Visual Studio, you can go to Tools and then Options, and you can configure just about anything you want about your IDE. Like for example, the color theme. If you want that to go to dark mode, you can go ahead and do that. It'll update it, no problem. We're gonna leave it on light mode though. I just wanted to demonstrate if you click the wrong button or you changed your mind earlier in the install, it's very easy to go to tools options and change that. Now for the font size, we're gonna to go to tools, options, and we're gonna to go to fonts and colors. And you can show the settings for any of the different things in the Visual Studio Editor. Now the text editor is going to be your main code window. I'm going to jump this up so that it's easier for you all to read. We're gonna make this 24, let's try that. Ah, that's much better. So if you wanna change the font size, if you're like me, if you like bigger font, because really as a beginner, you shouldn't be jamming too much code on a single line. So go ahead and make that bigger if you wanna make it bigger. Now over here, we have a very important window. It's called the Solution Explorer. Now, remember we use the word solution. It's a collection of projects. Here is the Hello World project under the Hello World solution. And if we did have multiple projects, they would be listed out here and they use a kind of tree view structure that you can open and close and drill down into your application's files. Console projects are very simple. They only have one file called program.cs, and this is where you can just write code. When you double click a file in the Solution Explorer, it will open it up as a tab over here in the main editor window. And these tabs can be rearranged, you can drag and drop them, you can move them, you can close them, you can pin them, you know, all the same kind of things that other text editors do because code at the end of the day is only text. Now what it started us off with is a comment, which we're gonna take out in a single line of code, console, dot right line, hello world. And let's go ahead and break this down real quick as a beginner so that you understand what this application is doing and what is happening. And this is where the coloring really matters. You'll notice that the console word is colored teal. And in C-sharp, whenever you see something teal, that's referring to a type. And console is a type that is built into the base class library. It represents the console window that our application is going to be written in. And in C Sharp, you use the dot or period key on the keyboard to drill into variable and type members. You can think of members as the data and behavior that are associated with types. So when I say console dot, it comes up with a list of all the different things that the console type is capable of doing. One of them is writing a line of text out to the screen. And write line is a method. We know it's a method because it has parentheses and it's colored this brown color. Methods in C Sharp or in any programming languages are actions that a type or an object can perform. So console.writeline, I want you to go into the console type. I want you to use its write line method. And then the parentheses in a method are where you pass data for the method to use. So console, I want you to write a line of text. Well, what do you want me to write? Well, here's the data. Hello world is what I would like you to write. And in C sharp, like other languages, the double quote symbols mean text or a string formally. Then we end the parentheses because whatever is opened must always be closed. That's a very common beginner mistake. Whenever you have a bracket, a brace or a parenthesis, what is opened must always be closed or else you're going to get an error. And then we have a semicolon because C sharp, like some other C based languages, they use a semicolon to tell the computer that this is the end of the statement. This is the end of my command. So console, write a line of text that says, hello world, end of statement. So now let's go ahead and run the application. In Visual Studio, there's two ways to run an application. You can press the F5 key, or you can press this play button at the top of the IDE. 
Whichever method you choose, it's going to compile the code. It's going to create the executable, that is the console application output from your project, and it's going to automatically run it. And here we have the console window. It shows up and we see that our text, hello world, has been printed. Now, if you want to stop the application, you can just close the console window and then you're back to your editor. You can continue writing code. Now, let me show you something neat here. You can right click on any file in the project and choose open folder in file explorer. And this will take you to the directory where your code project was created. This is what we configured in the beginning. But now you see there's two subfolders here, bin and obj. Let's open the bin folder, debug, here's the version of .NET. So this is where the output of your application actually lives. And if you ever wanted to deploy this application or send it to a friend that had the .NET framework, you could just package up the contents of this folder and send it to them. So the compilation process takes your code and turns it into output, which is specified by the type of project that you're working with in C-sharp. In this case, a console application creates an exe file. So we've reached a good stopping point for this video. If you're a complete beginner and just getting started with C-sharp, you now have your tools installed. You understand the difference between projects and solutions. You know how to create a console project, which will let you start learning C-sharp in earnest. And we also ran that project and showed you what happens and how your code becomes output of an exe and where those files live. Now, if you wanna see more of this series, it's going to be coming over time, like and subscribe. And if you're impatient, if you wanna learn more faster, then head on over to skillfoundry.io where I have full courses available. They have written material, videos, code examples, exercises, quizzes, solutions, everything that you need to learn C Sharp the right way. And as a bonus, when you subscribe to my courses, you get access to our Discord community where you can interact with myself and other senior developers and get your questions answered expediently. Until next time, happy coding.